son of a... What's going on there? Oh. There you go. <laughs> we'll have to edit that out. So... Hey there everybody, how's it going? Thanks again for stopping by the channel here at Gun Projects. If you're a returning viewer or subscriber, we really appreciate you coming back and supporting the channel. If you're a new viewer, hey, glad you stopped by. I don't know how you found us, but good thing you did. So, again with the shotgun thing. We have been heavy on shotguns recently, and again, it's not intentional, it's just what we have. Uh, we'll be getting in and we got these two bolt action shotguns on the table. They're both made by Mossberg. No idea that this was such a thing until we happened to come across these. Um, I'll point out why this has tape on it in a second, but uh, they're not, you're not going to see something like this. Too, probably a lot of older uh, gentlemen and ladies out there may be familiar with these. You may have grown up shooting them. Uh, they're not too common to see nowadays. I don't know when or if they've been like the production of bolt action shotguns has actually fully stopped. It probably has, but uh, these were phased out kind of a long time ago as far as like heavy production. Uh, these are originally designed to be super cheap, not a lot of parts, easy to throw together, easy to manufacture, and provide you with a cheap and reliable gun for hunting, whatever else you need. Apparently there was a lot of Mausers being modified, like the German uh, Gewehr 98 Mauser rifles. That style of gun was being modified to shoot shotgun shells um, and it was a concept that I guess caught the attention of Mr. Mossberg who owned the company or started the company at the time and began making prototypes way back in the 30s of something like this. Uh, sold them for super cheap eventually you know eventually we got it going sold them for super cheap and I guess they were somewhat popular uh, because they just worked and they were uh, I guess able to be made so cheap because you were able to make the steel a little bit different, a little bit softer to, uh, because you know, shotguns don't have the type of intense pressures that a full power rifle cartridge would have. So it allowed them to make the guns a little bit cheaper and there wasn't a lot of parts going on with them and you know, they're pretty simple. So they were, there was a ton of different series of these made. Uh, and I think there were some other manufacturers that started making them too, like Marlin, maybe a couple other guys, but uh, Mossberg I think was the first one that went heavy into these type of guns. So the two we have on the table here today, uh, we're not, not exactly sure when they were made, uh, but this one is a 16 gauge and I, I read somewhere that they quit making these around 1974, 1976. So it's probably, you know, of a vintage before that. This is a 20 gauge, which f visibly looks older. And I think um, these actually both have chokes on them, but this style of choke I think is older than this style. I uh, read that this is on the 300 series guns, which actually these are, well, they're all called like select chokes. It was like a, the letter C dash lect, C lect chokes. So like this one, um, well, I'll show you in a second. But anyway, this one essentially, instead of having a screw in choke, this is like a screw in choke, but on the outside, uh, it says F on it. So that assuming this is full choke, they, so you just swap these out, you know, literally it just unscrews. And uh, you can ch uh, change your chokes and adjust your chokes that way. So, and on this one, let me turn it around so you'll be able to see this. This is a nifty design. It really is cool. So you can see our little markings here. If you can uh, focus in the camera there. So you got your improved cylinder line, your, modify, or, uh, your modified line, and your full choke line at the bottom. So all you're going to do is screw in or screw out this choke so the end of it aligns with the line that you want. So like right now it was on improved cylinder. If I back it down, now it's at modified, but I'm gonna put it back to improved cylinder because that's what we're gonna use today. Actually, I gotta go in a little bit more, but you can see, I don't know if you'll be able to see in there. Essentially, you can see that inside, 
that diameter is in like split pieces and all this does is compress or loosen how close they are together to adjust your choke. That's actually a really cool design. I mean, pretty innovative, I think. Um, especially over these, which is funny because shotguns nowadays, you really wouldn't see something like that. You just have your uh, really subtle screw in chokes inside the barrel. But um, hey, that's pretty interesting. I've never really seen anything like that. Um, you know, if you guys know a lot about these guns and think, you know, this is common knowledge, then maybe it is. But, you know, we really never knew about these things until we saw them. But so we got these two. This one is the 190, I believe. Or no, this is the 185, which is our, yeah, this is actually a one, 185D. It's really hard to see it because this barrel's pretty pitted. And I'm not sure if the camera's going to be able to focus. And this one is the 190 which is of course our 16 gauge and then they did have a 12 gauge in this series which was the 195 we don't have that uh haven't seen one of those yet one one other thing we'll just show you here real quick is uh safety on these things is kind of bizarre i mean this one i think is missing there was supposed to be a red and a green dot there it's missing it but the, this would be fire that would be safe the red would be on this side green but that side and i'll show you on this one which uh, fortunately does have that. See, it's covered by the tape. It actually says an F and an S there, so I'm not sure if it's, it shows that. But, I mean, this gun is actually in fantastic condition as far as, well, <laughs> it was in fantastic condition, but unfortunately uh, it was broken in shipping. Didn't pay much for it in the first place. The actual whole trigger guard, which is obviously not present, that was literally broken in two and the gun itself you can see there's a big split here we currently have it held together by a little bit of tape just so we could shoot it uh, we're gonna be careful with it um, obviously but never shot it I don't think we I, I don't think we've ever shot this but yeah both these uh, apparently well this one takes two and three quarters uh, two and three quarter inch shells I'm not sure what this one takes but they had two and three quarter inch so that's all you can fit just the standard size in each of these now um they they are mag fed and apparently i mean you could these apparently both are just like a two round capacity which we have loaded up right now and uh i can't imagine that these are these are pretty old i guess and I, i've tried to just cycle in a couple of shells through this it seems like it's kind of hung up we haven't take these taken these apart we haven't cleaned them we generally don't uh when we first get stuff if it doesn't work, we'll clean it and see if it works. But a lot of times we just like to throw stuff in and see if it works. But yeah, I don't know how, I mean, I guess you'd be able to put, have this load up with three if you like loaded one in, then put the magazine in, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna see if it cycles. So which one should we shoot first? Maybe the 20. 20, okay. All right, mm. well, I guess I'll just try and fire one of these up. Uh, these mags are a little finicky, I have to say. Which actually, son of a bitch, bastard! What's going on there? Oh. There you go. <laughs> we'll have to edit that out. So, yeah, these mags are a little finicky, I have to say. They got a weird like pull tab on the bottom. Let's see if you can see this here, but you know, essentially you just press this, pull this back, and then this drops down. You pull it on these two tabs here. So let's see if it cycles. Cool, went in. All right, well, it's on fire. That really shot that thing out, huh? That's kind of cool. <laughs> there, <a> deer. <laughs> I'm gonna just drop one in on the top. See how that works. Right in. Wow. I mean, this is a super light gun. Even for a 20 gauge, it was. It actually, that last one kind of kicked a little bit. I don't even know what we're shooting here. I probably should, but we don't have a lot. Oh, this is number six. But anyway.
<laughs> I love how those shells fly up. Give me my sleeve back. Yeah. <laughs> Sent him flying. Yeah, I wish it held more. This is kind of fun shooting, shooting shotgun shells this way. I gotta tell you. Sounds like that deer's dying over there. I don't know what it's doing. <laughs> okay, so that was actually pretty cool, shooting that little uh, 20 gauge. So we're gonna move on to the broken 16 gauge here and uh, just see, uh, yeah, I forgot. You gotta have the, you gotta have it on fire to actually pull the bolt back all the way on both these things. Oh, <clears throat> see if this magazine is gonna stick in. Kinda. All right, seems like it's in. All right. It's just so weird seeing that big ass choke on the end. Uh oh. Oh, it didn't pick it up. The mag fell out. And it was in there. All right. I'll bet you it's, <laughs> the mag is popping out a little bit, as you can see. I bet you that's because this, it's got to be, I don't know exactly why. I don't know if it would have to do with this trigger guard being missing, but it's pro maybe it's because this gun is a little cracked up here. I don't know why. I mean, I'm assuming that's why, <laughs> that the mag is, let's see if it flies out. And it didn't really fly out, but. But I mean, I really like this interchangeable choke. Man, if we could ever find another stock for this, it'd be kind of a cool gun. It really sucks that the capacity is so low on these things, but you want to give it a try? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, well. Screw them. This <laughs> girl. Yep. That had a little bit of a flash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at the end. So that mag, did that drop out that time or no? I think so. It did. That's too bad. Yeah. Oh, whatever. I mean, so, but guys, the good news about this thing, although it is, you know, it was broke, but we got it for free because, you know, you make the old claim, and then the uh, apparently the auction company just gives you your money back. So insurance. Yeah, that's why I have insurance. So this one wasn't free. That one was free. Kind of sucks because, like I said, that I mean that stock is actually in nice shape. This barrel is in nice shape, and that's kind of cool. That's not rusty. That still that select choke still works. This is pretty. I mean, we only have one of these uh, select chokes. We don't have a plethora of them. They they had them in every size for these things, but. I mean, yeah, if, as long as it picks up the rounds nice and easy, uh, seems like a pretty reliable shooter. I mean, didn't really have issues. I mean, obviously we had, we didn't shoot many rounds, but I didn't really think these things were going to work that well. But it's pretty cool. So, you know, if you guys have any other information on these things, definitely be sure to comment below if we missed anything. I mean, I get we didn't give you a ton of information, but again, thanks for stopping by. Uh, just checking out something kind of interesting with us is like I said, these are a little bit new, but maybe you'll see them in another video someday. I don't know. You might not, but <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you guys have a good one. Thanks for stopping by and take care.